what? I, I, I've got nothing. I have got nothing on this one. Just roll the title. This is Halloween 2, as in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. It came out in 2009, and of course is a sequel to his remake of Halloween two years prior. So the movie picks up right after the first Halloween, just like the original Halloween 2 did, where Laurie Strode is taken to a hospital, but Michael Myers is still alive, finds Laurie in the hospital, and tries to kill her. But that's all the first 25 minutes, and it turns out that 25 minutes is a dream sequence. The movie actually takes place two years later, where Laurie Strode is now completely different than she was in the first movie. She was very ditzy and over-exaggerated and sort of happy. Here she's traumatized, she's punked out, and she is downright unlikable. As for Michael Myers, he is now just wandering the earth wearing a hoodie. He's grown out this giant beard. He's pretty much a hobo at this point and only wears his Michael Myers mask whenever he goes out to kill people. So throughout most of this movie, he's going around unmasked. Which is stupid that one of the most iconic horror characters out there would just go around through most of the movie without wearing the thing that defines him. And to make things even more stupid, he's having hallucinations about his dead mother who appears as this ghost dressed in all white. There's a white horse running around at points. There's a younger version of himself that's right beside him. I don't even know how to describe the movie at this point. So this is the Halloween movie that I have been wanting to see just out of pure curiosity. And that all came from the original Spill review. When I listened to Corey Coleman talk about this movie, I'd hear stuff like it's unintentionally funny, it's got a white horse running around, the most creative kill in the movie is from a cow, and it just sounds like the most batshit insane horror movie out there that I just had to see it, but I didn't make it a top priority. And I obviously didn't get around to watching it until now, so I could do this review, and Wow, it, uh, it definitely lives up to its weirdness. I actually don't know how to feel about this movie compared to Rob Zombie's original because this time it's not a remake. I mean, the first 25 minutes is sort of a remake of the original Halloween 2 where it takes place in the hospital. But outside of that, it's its own thing, which I'm grateful for that it doesn't have to follow the original Halloween 2. But what we get is just some of the most bizarre decisions I've ever seen for any mainstream movie. I will say this right off the bat that it's a gorgeous movie to look at. There are some incredible shots, uh, uh, some of which you could actually frame on a wall. They look that good. And Rob Zombie definitely does have a very good eye for visuals, at least when it comes to establishing shots. But outside of that, there's not much else this movie has going for it. It is just as bizarre and disturbing, maybe even more so than the original Rob Zombie Halloween. I cannot find any character to latch on to when it comes to wanting to root for someone. Laurie Strode has just become so unlikable that I can't stand her. Now I understand that she's trying to deal with the effects of the first Halloween movie, so again, like with H2O and the Blumhouse film, it's another way to show off how Laurie Strode is handling the aftermath, but this is the worst version yet because Laurie Strode is just this ungrateful little punk, quite literally. She gets into fights with her best friend Annie, played once again by Daniel Harris, who did nothing to aggravate Lori. The two of them went through the exact same trauma that they did before, and I think Annie got it worse. So these two girls should be side by side, consulting each other and helping each other out. But Lori is just so unlikable that I just cannot take her side at all. I was rooting for Daniel Harris more than anything throughout this movie, and she's barely in it. At least she got another paycheck, but even then. Now, when it comes to Dr. Loomis, Malcolm McDowell once again plays Dr. Loomis, who is now a self-obsessed, egotistical celebrity who's going out there on a book tour to publish a book that he wrote about Michael Myers, which some people say is pretty much exploiting the murders he committed that Halloween night. And Malcolm McDowell is just going at 11. He was decent with some over-the-top moments in the first movie, but this one, he just does not care. He is so goofy, so over the top 
that it also lends into another big problem with the movie is that it is hilarious. Not as unintentionally funny as Halloween Resurrection because this movie is just so disturbed that it's kind of hard to laugh. But whenever Michael Myers kills people, it's hilarious because you can hear his grunting, like just angry grunts, like Ugh! Ugh! There are a couple scenes that really stick out to me, one of which is when he stabs a nurse repeatedly, that nurse played by Octavia Spencer before she went on to win an Academy Award for the help, but Michael Myers is stabbing her repeatedly on the ground over and over again. He takes a pause and then he stabs it one more time as the music fades. I have no idea if he was intentionally playing this for laughs, but it was just so exaggerated that it's funny. And most of Michael Myers' victims consist of some really dumb and ugly people. Not just outside, but inside. Like with the last movie, most of the characters in this movie are horrible human beings, but they are also the bravest people on the planet because, like I mentioned, he's going throughout most of the movie without his mask. He just looks like a bum. So people try to treat him like a bum, but they also antagonize him as well. They're not nice about it. They are just evil. They're mean-spirited. They beat him up. And of course, being that this is Michael Myers, he's gonna kill them. He's gonna kill them in a graphic way and it just comes across as funny. It's not suspenseful because the kills are over-exaggerated and the characters are a bunch of horrible background actors that you could care less. The big thing that really distinguishes this movie from the last one and all the other Halloween movies is how pretentious it is. Throughout the entire movie, there's this white horse walking around with Sherry Moon Zombie, who plays Michael Myers' mother. It's supposed to be the driving force for him to kill. He's supposed to reunite with his sister and by the end of the movie, Rob Zombie thinks he's Stanley Kubrick, to where Michael Myers is killed, Dr. Loomis is killed, and Laurie Strode is killed. And then the final scene of the movie takes place in an insane asylum, where it's all white, and then we see Sherry Moon Zombie with that white horse walking towards Laurie Strode as she smirks. And I have no idea what it's supposed to represent at all, and I it just... It's so baffling. It never frustrates me because, I mean, this movie has the advantage of no rape scene like the last movie, but I don't know what to make of this. It, I think it's the second worst Halloween movie. I still hate Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers uh, completely. This one is just so bizarre that it doesn't make any sense at all. I'll still say don't waste your money on it. There's no reason for you to see this movie at all. Even with all the exaggerated stuff that I'm saying, the weird dream sequences, the white horse, the unintentionally funny moments, the over-the-top acting, it's still not worth it because of how disturbing it is to watch this movie. Like, Rob Zombie really was the wrong choice to tackle any Halloween movie. He would have been fine for Friday the 13th, maybe not ideal, but maybe better than Halloween. And there was never a sequel to this. This movie ends in a way where there shouldn't be a sequel, and I'm grateful there isn't. And that's my review for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 and all the Halloween movies. I have finally gone through all of them, so now it's time to rank them. I'm gonna start with the bottom of the barrel and then just work my way up to the top. In dead last, there's The Curse of Michael Myers. It doesn't matter which version of the movie you watch, this is the worst and probably the most offensive of the films. That's number 11. And then at number 10 is Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie version, because, well, just go back to the beginning of this video and you'll find out why. That is assuming you skip this whole review entirely, but moving on. At number 9 is Halloween 5 for how boring it is and just how they kind of throw away everything that 4 worked up to. And then at number 8 we got the original Rob Zombie Halloween which again I give props for trying something different but that also leads into a lot of the movie's problems. So that's why it's at the spot it's at. And then number 7 is Halloween Resurrection. It's a terrible movie all around and it really is insulting in the first bit of the movie for how it just kind of takes away Laurie Strode's victory at the end of H2O but I laugh my ass off. It's terrible, but it's hilarious. Then at number six is H2O. I didn't grow up with this movie. I don't love it, but the last bit of the movie is very entertaining, and it does have a lot of good ideas here and there. Then 
at number five is the original Halloween 2. It's a decent movie and very well made in certain areas, but the reason it's at the middle of this list is because it repeats a lot of elements from the first Halloween to where you feel like you've seen this already. Then at number four, we got Season of the Witch, which I originally wasn't going to count because it's its own movie and has nothing to do with Michael Myers, but it is Halloween 3, so that's where I put it. Then number 3, we have Halloween 4. I was not expecting to like this movie as much as I did, but hey, it's here. And then at number 2, we got the new Blumhouse Halloween movie, which I love. And after seeing all these sequels and the two Rub Zombie movies, my love for this movie just increases. But at number 1, we got the original Halloween. No Halloween movie now or in the future can top this masterpiece. So there you go, I'm done with the Halloween series, I'm done with Michael Myers, but I still have at least one more review to release for Halloween night tomorrow. And this one will be a little more simple and more innocent, so check in tomorrow to see what that review will be. But first I want to hear what you guys have to say about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. If you've seen it, what are your opinions on it? Do you think it's just so insane that you can't enjoy it? Just let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like, and of course, leave a comment. Don't forget to support my Patreon page. Follow me on social media. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Mm -hmm.